Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of RTHG. It's been quite a while um, because of the COVID situation and so forth that has been happening. But today I want to just talk really, really quickly about OBS Studio um, and answer some questions that you guys have been sending in um, to the other videos that I have created with OBS and how to get uh, up and running. For those of you who don't know what OBS really is, um, OBS is actually two pieces of software you could choose um, that does live streaming. So it actually sets up the stage pretty much over the cameras and so forth and transitions and so forth so that you could stream not just you know just one camera but you could like stream multiple cameras or your desktop or whatever so you could check out the software it's just o b s space studio just google that and you'll see that there's um, actually that's the original version um, that is available but i said there's actually two because there's the original version that is open source and free and there's also another one that is also free that um, someone all, someone built over. Called, um, Streamlabs is a company that built over um, that version. So that has even more enhanced features. And that one is called Streamlabs OBS. Okay, so back to the point. Um, so what I want to do today is um, show you guys an example of my setup um, on ho and how I do some of the productions. It's not the productions for RTG. I actually do this for... Um, a small online service that we do on Sundays. Um, so uh, let me get to the screen that um, does most of it, which is OBS Studio. Uh, one thing before I get into that is that um, it is not, you don't have to have more than one monitor while doing this, but I have to let you know that it is so much easier when you do have at least two monitors um, so that you could use one of the monitors um, to do the controls through OBS and the other monitor you could do like your your work. So uh, right now in this RTHD studio, which is really my living room, um, you are looking at me here. But uh, if I if to 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 my left, which is actually your your right in this case, um, I actually have a, a desktop screen here. I have OBS Studio in the middle right now where I'm talking to you guys, and to your left, which is my right. I also have another screen. So I actually have three screens. The main screen for me, because I am the actual operator of what is going on, is on the main screen. And then I have the other two screens in which I could share. So let me get, let me show you guys what OBS, my OBS studio looks like, the setup very quickly. And then we'll, we'll switch over and I'll show you guys the screens when we, when we do the changes as well. So let me move over to OBS studio. So what you're seeing here. Uh, it's, it's a little bit distracting and it looks pretty weird because you, what you're seeing here is what OBS Studio is streaming. So the fact that it is streaming um, the OBS Studio itself obviously makes it look crazy here. You're actually seeing streams within streams within streams. Uh, forget about that. Just remember that whatever is in this screen here, whatever is in this small little area here, is what will be streamed to your users, right? So... I am actually trying to show you guys what the, the, the display looks like. So in OBS Studio, you'll see that there's the scenes which I have created. And so I have multiple scenes that are created. And you can probably see it here because it's bigger here. And this is, uh, because I have three displays, I created three different scenes, each with a different display. And as you can see, I actually labeled the display. So for example, um, the one to my left, which is on your right, there's this desktop screen, which people don't normally see because I open up a PowerPoint presentation. And so that blocks most of this stuff. So I have a scene and I label that PowerPoint so that if I have to, when I'm speaking and I've switched over to the PowerPoint, I switch over to the PowerPoint by clicking on this and it switches me over. Um, then I have my next, my next, uh, my, my next scene, which is a, another display that does zoom. So when I have someone that I'm interviewing someone, I, I put that one on zoom. So what you're seeing here is the zoom, the zoom one. This is another, this is another screen that I share from time to time. So I put the whole zoom uh, on this and people and whoever is talking would be seen by the users and so forth. And then of course I have, you see, do not click, which is my OBS studio. This is one I don't click on when I'm live because I don't want to, I don't want to show people what I'm producing here. Um, and that's how that's how I kind of pretty much get it done. So I swap between mostly uh, my camera, which you which you just saw this scene, and then uh, move over to like my PowerPoint, move over to Zoom, and then back to my camera. Now you might be wondering what's mom camera. Well, because sometimes when we do a, uh, when we start when we start the service when we start the, the video, 
um, she is actually on another camera, which is right on the side here. Um, it's out of the, it's out of my current view here, obviously, for because we don't want an unsightly camera while this is happening and so forth. So I just want to show you guys what that looks like. So um, that is a second camera. Uh, I have to mention also that I'm using Logitech, a uh, Logitech um, C920, both cameras, and for some reason they don't work together. You cannot put them together onto one scene, but you could. It's very easy to switch them between both here. So, for example, I'll just show you what it looks like. So, she actually stands here, uh, or should I say around here, and it's probably a little angle up a little bit more, and she speaks over here. And um, then I just switch back into, and you can see where my hand is. You could switch back into, I could switch back into my main scene, I could do what I'm doing, and then switch back into display one, two, three. Now, the thing is that if you were to, if you were to have only one screen the problem with having one screen is that that would be your main screen and everything you'd have to do is uh, would have to also be on that screen um so for example if you have a powerpoint presentation this is why it's so important to have to to try to have at least two screens is that if you have a powerpoint presentation and you were about to share your main screen and that my as i said my main screen is the obs studio screen right so if I click on that, then obviously that it would have shown the OBS Studio, even if I have my PowerPoint presentation, because I'll have to click on OBS Studio first, then click on the PowerPoint presentation, and then the PowerPoint presentation would open up and block this area here and show in this area. Here. And so it, it wouldn't be as, as fully professional as you would want it to be, but it is definitely doable for those of you who may be, you know, doing education and so forth. That shouldn't be a problem. Uh, but, uh, you know, for, for, you know, for more... Uh, produced video you wouldn't want this screen to be shown right and um, that's pretty much how we do the scene management and why you, you should try to get at least two monitors now last but but not least i just want to mention very quickly how do you go about getting two monitors well there's a few ways to do that um, if you have a desktop computer, even a laptop could do this. But even if you have a if, if you have a if you have a desktop, let's start with the desktop. If you have a desktop computer, and you have one screen, chances are you're probably running um, nowadays um, either the HDMI or, or VGA ports to get to that to that to get that one feed. Now most computers nowadays they have both a VGA port and a HDMI port. So for me, for example, I had a VGA port and HDMI port on my motherboard. And so one would provide a HDMI feed to my big screen, which is which you wouldn't get to see at this point in time. I'm sorry about that. But um, and then the other one is a VGA port that goes to a normal monitor. And when you have Windows running and you plug in those two, and I'm assuming that the drivers are running properly, um, it will ask you to or, or you, it it'll ask you to to um, to adjust your display settings, and then you could go into your display settings and enable it. I'll just show you just very quickly what that looks like um if i could get to it very quickly all right so you right click on the desktop you go to display settings and as long as you have the two screens connected um and the driver works you'll see that usually you'll get at least two of these in other words you just won't see one monitor you'll get a few monitors and so you could just adjust them side by side and um that's kind of pretty much uh, well, what it does. Now, if you want to get a third screen, usually um, you have run out of hardware resources in order to do that. So you'd need to get something like a USB to uh, VGA adapter, which you could plug into your USB, and then you'll and then you plug in another screen to that, and then you get three screens like what I did. Um, it gets pretty hard to to manage all of this, so you have to try to sort out your scenes beforehand. Um, and because I'm produce, producing while I'm speaking, it, it becomes, it, it's really, it, it, it's more stressful, right? It's a little, it'll be, it's a little bit more stressful, but it, it's doable. Um, if you could get someone to do that part for you, it's, it's, it's going to be really great. But if you can't, you could still do it yourself. Um, so I guess that's, that's all that I wanted to explain. I hope that this kind of gives you an idea of what actually happens in the background of OBS Studio and what you can really do with it. And um, I want to get back to another video and so hopefully you can look forward to that one where i'll actually be explaining how to adjust audio for specific screens so for example if you have a camera like i have a camera here um when i'm on this scene the, that camera audio will work and then when i switch over to another scene it will switch off this camera and it will use the camera audio from from there so yes you, you know it, it 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 is beneficial because it will switch off 
you you know you could be talking while someone else is recording and it wouldn't affect it because of that so stay tuned to that one uh thank you so much for viewing please smash the like button and um subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you guys again soon on another episode of rthg coming to your youtube screen now you take care stay safe out there